Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Chris and Gris. If you don't already, please make sure you follow and subscribe. It really helps us out. That way we keep making content like this. So today we're gonna to be talking about boondocking. And boondocking, if you're not familiar, is just another word for camping off grid. And that means we don't have any power, we don't have any water or any type of hookups whatsoever. So we're really just trying to live in the tab self-sustainably without you know, having any hookups whatsoever. So as you can see, we're pretty isolated and really there's nothing around. So we decided to do this for a week and we'll go ahead and show you the different techniques that we use to be able to survive a week without having to be hooked up to anything. So now some things to consider when you are boondocking with a tab. So you have to keep in mind, the tab is an RV in every sense and it's self-sustainable in that it has a tank, it has a black tank, well, a cassette, and we'll get into that. Uh, it has a gray tank, it even has solar if you get the boondock edition, but it's, it's miniature. So, um, you know, when you have the luxury in a regular RV of being able to stay off grid for, for like two weeks, you know, because you have so much space for for those sort of things, uh, you have to consider that everything is a lot smaller in a tab. So you have to plan accordingly. Okay, so the first thing to consider before anything else is the location of your tab. So one of the things to consider is, especially if you're boondocking in the desert, is that you won't have any type of cooling, right? Because you need shore power, AC power, to be able to turn on the AC because it generates so much voltage. So one of the things that you need to consider is passive cooling. So now what that means is that the sun usually rises from the east. Well, not usually, it rises from the east and it sets in the west. So you should orient your, your tab in a north to south uh, orientation. So that means you should orient your tab to be in line from east to west. That way the sun is traveling across the tab the whole time and both either side where you have windows, you're not getting direct sunlight. Now, so you always get a little bit more southern exposure than northern exposure. So one thing that we did to remedy it was to add a uh, shade on the southern side. That way that gives us extra shade and there's not direct sunlight going into our windows and then we have a cross breeze between the south and the north exposure. So the shade that we added is the King Camp uh, tent. So you can find this on Amazon. Um, we're not affiliated in any way, but we think it's an awesome product. What they're really meant for um, is like a, a car tailgate tent. So essentially, you know, your tailgate would go up and then the tent hangs off of that. But we found uh, that it works perfectly for the Tab 320. It's actually like the right exact size uh, to be able to hug the sides of it and then give you enough of an awning, um, you know, to be able to give you some shade. So right here you could see that it's giving us just enough shade to cover up that southern exposure of the Tab. And the cool thing is that it comes with these bungees here and that gives it a lot of tension and it really, really holds up really well. Um, a couple of days ago, we had like 10 mile per hour winds and I thought it was going to rip off, you know, or blow off and, and really it, it, it held its own and it did really well and it's been working well for us. So we really recommend it and its price point is perfect. You know, it's right above $100. There's other awnings that are specifically made for the tab that are above the $700 range. And, you know, as much as they're like really good quality, we just couldn't, um, you know, afford that. So this is a really good alternative. Okay, let's illustrate this a little bit better. This is our tab. This is our happy place. So right now, as you can see, this is how the tab is oriented in real life. So we have north, east, south, west, and uh, because of the terrain, that's kind of how it ended up. We didn't end up exactly east and west. 
So the way that this works is the sun will rise from the east and then because of the tilt of the earth, uh, it comes around this way on the south side and then sets in the west. So you really on the northern exposure, you don't really get any sunlight until the afternoon, like late afternoon. And by that time, there's not a lot of uh, heat generated from that sun. So then <clears throat> from the southern exposure, we need to protect ourselves. So then that's where we add our shade. So one of the restricting factors in boondocking an extended amount of time is your fresh water capacity. So the tab holds 19 gallons. And you may think that's a lot, but you know, if you're showering even like every other day, like by the second, third day, um, you're, you're really gonna be on empty. So what we decided to do was get some of these six gallon tanks uh, and we use this, we actually use this to shower twice. Um, you know, we, we bought one of those solar packs where you put water uh, into this like black bag and then you let the sun heat it up and then we hung it up on the side of the tub and, and we used that to shower and it took up about five gallons, so one of these tanks. Um, and then we also use the excess water for washing dishes and stuff like that. So really the tank we're saving it as much as possible and only using it to like wash our hands, brush our teeth and, and that sort of thing, or using it to flush water uh, for the cassette toilet. Campco sells these uh, amazing little hooks. Uh, they're really cool. You could buy them at, like at a Walmart um, or an RV store. They're, they're pretty widely used. And what's cool is that the tab actually has the rail system that works with it. So as you can see this little notch, you just slide it through and then you know you slide it all the way up and you're able to hang stuff from it now um, so this is what we used in order to hang the water bag for our shower and to also hang the tent all right so let's talk about solar power so we have the tab 320 uh 2021 boondock edition so that comes standard with a 100 watt solar panel and a vitron uh smart solar controller and what's really cool about the smart solar controller that it comes with is that you could connect your phone um, through Bluetooth uh, and then you could see real time like the data that you're getting from your solar panel and how much is coming in how much you're putting out so let's go ahead and I'll show you what that looks like so as you can see right now um, the solar panel is pulling in 76 watts and that gives us an average of like 14.6 all the way up to 15 point in voltage and uh, so that in turn uh, is powering up our battery to about 13.3 volts which is a significant amount um, i believe a, a battery at 100 uh, percent capacity is 12.6 volts and above so so that's a significant amount so during the day and while you're garnering so much solar power you're able to utilize that um, in the form of a refrigeration or we use the uh, the the exhaust fan you know to to get some of the hot air out and we also use it to be able to charge our phones through the 12 volt power and um, so so it really does come in handy and we also use it to, to power up some of our, our, um, our battery packs. That way when we don't have enough sun, we can uh, go ahead and power that stuff up. All right, guys. So besides using the Vitron Connect app, um, you know, to see where our battery is, as you guys saw yesterday night, we had like a 12.4. So we actually keep track of how the battery is being charged. And thankfully, the solar panel has been doing really good. So your tab is going to come... Well, if you get the boondock edition, it comes with the solar panels and the solar panel is charging its battery. Um, so actually, we also use this device that will connect directly to your battery and it's going to go ahead and read you. So right now we're at 12.9, which is perfect, especially that we're boondocking. We are not connecting to shore, so 12.9 is really good. We're able to run our refrigerator. We're able to run our fan. And actually, Chris has even disconnected some stuff throughout the tap he disconnected the TV um, there's a connection here we were re seeing that it might have been pulling some energy again we're trying to 
limit our use of everything. So that's also a tip. Disconnect your TV because you're not going to be using it while you're boondocking. Okay, so a few things to keep in mind about the kitchen area when boondocking. One, if we do the orientation of the tab the way we were talking about, you're going to get direct heat through this window here. So we try to keep this, um, the, the, the light partition up, that way there's not any heat coming in. And we keep these two side windows open for side ventilation. Uh, another thing, as we talked about, you know, we have a little puck like here and that'll give a slide during the day. And then the most important thing, uh, the fridge. So the 2021 tab model comes with just the electric fridge. It doesn't ha have the propane fridge anymore. So what we try to do is uh, really monitor the different levels at which we keep it cool right now because we have you know, an excess amount of energy coming in from the solar panels. We have it running at three um, and it goes all the way up to six, but we typically don't go all the way that high. We'll keep it at three and that we find that that keeps everything really cold. And then as the day starts to wind down and uh, our solar energy starts to go down, we'll start turning the dial down all the way down to, actually we'll even turn it off, but once we hit around 70%, we'll turn it down to one and then we'll keep that uh, a little bit cold. It'll keep it a little bit cold and once it gets night, you know, and, and we'll try to limit the amount of times that we open the fridge and then we'll just shut it off and then we'll turn it on again in the morning. So one thing to remember, power that you're generating from your solar panels comes in DC or direct current. Um, so the, you will only be able to use uh, the, the DC sockets that come standard in the tab or the USB outlets. But you won't be able to use the 120 volt. Uh, you'll need to be getting AC power or alternating current, you know, or hooked up to short power to be able to use those things. So for that reason, you're not able to use the microwave. You're not able to use the AC or the um, any of the outlets. You can use the heater, but that that'll be running on propane. Um, so that's that's essential to know because. <laughs> You know, so I, I see a lot of people on forums saying like, hey, like my outlets don't work and I'm running on solar. And yeah, so that's why, because you, you need to be using the direct current or the DC. One thing to consider when boondocking is the lack of AC power. So AC power is 120 volt, right? Just your normal standard plug. So we need that to be able to power our laptops. And being that we're working remotely on the road, uh, we constantly need to be charging our laptops. So in order to remedy that, we ended up buying a solar charger and a, a external solar panel. So these solar panels will um, charge the, the solar charger and we find that if we orient it in the morning, uh, you know, towards the, the morning sun by like 12, 1 p.m., our solar charger will be completely uh, charged. And then that will be able to charge our laptops for the rest of the day and then it'll go on to, to the night to power our iPads and stuff like that so we can, <coughs> so we can watch you know, Netflix and whatever. And, uh, and then it'll even have a little bit of juice into the morning so that if we need to charge our laptops for the morning, we're able to. And then we'll go ahead and rinse and repeat and charge it up again with the sun. So this is a necessity if you plan on working while boondocking or even, you know, just to use, you know, devices that you'll need that, that'll need to have AC power. Some smaller things that we do is uh, get lights and stuff like this. This is a little, one of those little solar powered lights um, that really helps out in the middle of the night. You know, they turn on at night and we have power out here. So every little bit counts. We try to minimize as much of the stress that we put onto the battery and that includes lights even though they're led and it's just a little bit um you know every little bit counts so we typically don't use lights when we're boondocking lastly make sure that you stock up on water because uh you know especially if you, you want to stay away for a for a week you know and not go back into the city we ended up buying three of these 2.5 gallons that way we could stay hydrated out in the desert sun all right.
guys so at this point if you finish watching the video and there's still some topics that we didn't touch on or anything you'd like to know about boondocking that wasn't in this video please uh leave us a comment below and we'll try to answer as best as possible and also if you are an experienced boondocker go ahead and leave us any tips that you think we'll enjoy again because we are new to the boondocking and rv and travel trailer experience so we would enjoy any tips that you have for us and also don't forget to subscribe like and yeah and try to hit that little bell thing too because uh if that's <laughs> what you're into yeah so until then we'll go ahead and see you guys on the road